Hello, and welcome to Insightful Conversations with your host, Three Principles Practitioner, Del A.D. Jones. Join her each week as she welcomes some of the world's leading Three Principles teachers and practitioners who share how this understanding has dramatically improved the quality of their lives and the lives of those they work with. I am thrilled to have as my guest today, Angus Ross. After a long career as a fashion and advertising photographer, Angus has taken to transformational coaching like a duck to water. Mentored by the world-famous Pranskin Associates, he has developed an insatiable appetite for helping people tap into their true potential. From the defence industry to women's retail, from the federal prison system to the world of sport, from couples and individuals to large groups, Angus connects with his clients in a very honest and open way and then talks about the role of thought and how it either frees us or limits us. The net result of this is that Angus's clients get a greater sense of their essential nature and experience a much higher degree of success and well-being in their lives. It sounds simple enough, but the results are absolutely life-changing. So welcome, Angus. Thank you for joining me today. You're Thank the, you, Del. You're the other half of the dynamic Ross duo. <laughs> <laughs> I am. So you get to defend yourself today. Oh, well, so. good. This will be the rebuttal statement, <laughs> exactly. I imagine. Exactly. <laughs> so I was asking um, Rohini when she was on uh, how she first came across the principles, and I'm going to ask you the same. So, oh, okay. Even though I know the answer. <laughs> Well, so I came across the principles. It's kind of a funny story because I think by that point, my wife, who'd been a therapist probably for, I want to say, I don't know, maybe 10 plus years, maybe not as long as that. um, I feel like I had been dragged kicking and screaming to all kinds of personal personal growth workshops. Mm -hmm. And usually in the form of an ultimatum that our marriage that was on the rocks sufficient enough to need some kind of magic bullet that we would get from this said (laughs) workshop. So I was very jaded about all of that, uh, all of those experiences. And I think I was kind of relieved that she was kind of leaving me alone for what appeared to be like <laughs> a considerable amount of time that, you know, that, that was maybe I thought maybe she thought I was a lost cause. But anyway, she had uh, started up this mentorship program. Um, I know that she was curious about going into the world of coaching um, and it seemed to make more sense to her. But I, I know that she had started up this mentorship program with the Pranskys, and I didn't even know who the Pranskys were, and I probably didn't even retain that information at the time. But I know that she would disappear up to the Pacific Northwest every once, once every three months or so. Mm-hmm. And, um, and she would come back and be in this kind of sort of what I would say was an altered state, which you know, based on all the personal growth workshops that I'd been to, I was inclined to mistrust. Mm -hmm. But I noticed through the course of time that that, that she was shifting in a a way that seemed really like something was landing and it seemed like something was... um, um, it's just that there was just a very significant change that I noticed within her that was very felt very positive. And I'll give you one example. Um, I think she came back the second time uh, and... I, I guess I was in a low mood, which would be the vernacular <laughs> that I would use now. But um, I remember trying to sort of pick a fight with her and, and being probably a, a total dickhead <laughs> and being very unpleasant. And I said a few things that would have normally got a you know, got some kind of a rise out of her and probably in the past would have really kicked things off. But um, in this particular situation, it just, it just seemed like it was water off a duck's back. It, mm. Nothing was landing. And I remember... S- getting to the point where I said something particularly offensive, which even shocked myself. <laughs> and I said, well, you've got no comeback to that? And I, and I was kind of taken aback by that. And mm-hmm. she said, no, I can, I can just see that you're suffering with your thinking. And, um, and in the past, that would have probably just felt like some sort of new, you know, psycho babble yeah. kind of spiel Dismissive. that she was like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> launching in my direction. But the look on her eyes was just one of complete compassion, which just mm-hmm. really kind of took me off guard. It was just really surprising. And uh, and it just really allowed me to see that she really meant what she was saying. And so um, really what that did was just hold up a mirror to me and, and showed me what a total asshole I was being. <laughs> and really got me to re- reflect on really how I was mm-hmm. showing up in the relationship. But more importantly, it actually got me interested in what she was doing. Yeah. Which how is that's kind of the genesis point where I would say that, yeah, at that point, I got interested in the principles and wanting to know about the principles and learn about the principles. And that's why I ended up going up and being her client, as it were. As for <laughs> so what was that like hurrah. for you? <laughs> um, 
Well, that was... That, to me, I think, if memory serves me correct, I just decided that this was going to be a situation where I'm going to go up there. Well, for one thing, I don't have to, you know, I, I, this is like a weekend off. I don't have to deal mm. with the kids. Now, were you a photographer at this point still? I was, I was yeah, I was kind of a bit more part-time with my photography mm. at that point. I actually had to take a take on a proper grown-up job for a while as well <laughs> to supplement that meager income. That the my, transition of the importance of photographers. Yes, my, we my photography in, income had distilled, it something, <laughs> distilled itself done into something that was uh, less meaningful <laughs> by that point. So um, I think I just when you know, it was part of anything else. I got to go up and have a weekend off and, mm -hmm. and kick back. That was very appealing to me. But in my mind, I, w I thought that I was going into some kind of sort of uh, therapy situation. So I really had it in my mind that she was taking, up, taking me up as her client and I mm -hmm. was going to be fixed but i was going to be you know well w worse than that i was going to be sat in a room with having my wife as my counselor that yeah. just sounds so out of kilter with yeah. you know what, what i wanted and what i needed at that time but and george uh Prensky, who was uh who was the uh who was the person up for that particular exercise <laughs> I thought Rohini would probably be the person that was counseling me. He was just going to be guiding, aiding and abetting her through that whole process. So I remember saying, no, this isn't working for me. I don't want that. And mm -hmm. um, and I remember saying to George, you know, I think that, that it'd be better if, if the Rohini shouldn't even be in the room. If this is therapy, Yeah, <laughs> I don't want my wife, you know, being my counselor, as it were. And basically he spent the first... Uh, meeting with me alone, mm -hmm. uh, convincing me that, that that it would be it would behoove me to actually have Rohini in tow, and that that, that actually this wasn't therapy. This was yes. something altogether something altogether different. And um, and then we sort of proceeded on from there, and, yeah. and I had these amazing conversations, really you know pointing in the direction of of the the principles and and how the mind works. And uh, and George will maintain that I saw something in that very first session. <laughs> I was going to ask you that. How I am it take? <laughs> I'm inclined to say that there's a little bit of hyperbole running there, but um, something definitely landed. It just made perfect sense to me. Yeah. It was kind of for me. It was just it was just very simple, and and um, and I think that I think because in that simplicity with my mind being very sped up at the time, I wanted it to be something more. It's just like, mm. it can't be, you know, it can't be this simple. There has to be more to it than this. So did it, I mean, you say it was simple, but I mean, when you've also been in a relationship where there's conflict and there's so much sort of blaming each other, were, were you able to really see very quickly that that your thinking was coming from you, not from, from Rohini? Well, I think I got it intellectually, but I don't yeah. think I got it experientially. I think okay. that came later. <laughs> <laughs> and it, and sometimes it still leaves us. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I had a perfect example of this um, soon after we got home. I think mm -hmm. that through the course of those four days, my mind definitely settled down. And then with that, the luxury of having that experience allowed our relationship to really prosper and flourish. So our relationship kind of had a little bit of a, a vacation from all the drama. <laughs> yeah. And then I remember being back home for about two weeks um, from the Pacific Northwest and then uh, just having this awareness that, wow, you know, we, you know, something has really shifted in our relationship. There's something, I, don't, I can't even really put my finger on what happened up there in the yeah. corner, but something obviously happened. I must have drunk the Kool-Aid or whatever, <laughs> or we drank the Kool-Aid. And uh, and we were getting on like a house on fire. Things were going really well. And it was just, you know, to tempt fate, <laughs> having that thought, the shit really hit the fan. And something happened. I don't know what it is. Obviously, we got both simultaneously got into a low mood and had this massive fight. And um, I remember that it started in the afternoon one day and then went through to the evening. We actually went to sleep on it, woke up in the morning. I, what, however I chose to test the water, I did, <laughs> and it, we were still in the same space. Mm -hmm. So I remember being in the kitchen and then um, getting ready to, to leave for the day and going to work and thought, well, I, you know, I'm going to go, I have to go in there and have the last word, you know. I'm just really <laughs> not, <laughs> not going to let this, this lie. And so I remember having in my mind kind of pre-rehearsed what I was going to say and it was something along the lines that, you know, like, here, look, here we are once again mm -hmm. at each other's throats, you spent a small fortune on more psychological snake oil. I was like, you know, this was the <laughs> venom that was going to come out of my mouth. Yeah. And I remember sitting and standing at the foot of the bed and just coming out with all this vitriol. And I had this sort of really weird, I want to say out of the body experience, <laughs> 
because I just suddenly just got to sort of step back in a way and yeah. see, you know, how I was behaving. And what really struck me, struck me at that moment was I couldn't even remember what we were fighting about. Wow. So yeah. everything that I had experienced in Lacona just really in that moment pointed to the illusionary nature of thought. Absolutely. And like just in terms of how I'm showing up and how I'm behaving. I can't even remember why we're fighting. Yeah. And yet here I want to all I want to do is just like, you know, put her down. Yeah. And it just brought up a lot of emotion to me. I mean, it, and it kind of still does in a sense, you know, the fact that, you know, here I am, I absolutely adore my wife, but there's a part of me that just wants to like be mean and just mm -hmm. like pay lip service to this crazy narrative that I've yeah. been running in my head, some old story that is meaningless. And mm -hmm. most of all, it's just a complete illusion. So <laughs> that I would say was the defining moment yeah. in terms of my experience of going up to Lacona and, 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 and seeing how the principles really landed for me in a very big way. Yeah. That's so amazing. It really, I, it, that's so wonderful. I think it's, it's what this understanding points to is not that we're going to become so spiritual that we don't get into those states again because we're all going to get I call it like hijacked or kidnapped by our thinking <laughs> right. you know yeah. like, like dragged off kicking and screaming yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it happens yeah but it's how the pretty observer, much on a daily basis <laughs> <laughs> but it's the observer the the ability to observe that's what's happening and the resilience that you can come back from that. Yeah. You know, they don't get like drag you like really far off. They're only just a few feet as opposed to like miles away that they used to. My yeah. Course. No, that's a big change. And I think yeah. for me, that's that's the, the one fundamental shift that I think has really, um, really changed with our relationship, my life and, you know, the way that, you know, I, I can I can do this as a profession. That's the one thing that I've seen that yeah. really has enormous value. And I think when you've had you've had such an incredible story that you can share with your clients, because I know you do a lot of uh, couples counseling with Rohini. You have those intensives. And I mean, I think you guys have been through it. You've been you know, you haven't always had this idyllic relationship. You have separated at a time and you've dealt with a lot. And the fact that you are so together and so happy and beautiful, not all the time because <laughs> nobody is, but still, I mean, probably one of the happiest, most joyful couples I've witnessed. Um, but I don't know, I say that, but a lot of couples in this understanding seem to have really amazing relationships. They're very fresh, very new. And I think that whole concept about the separate realities, I know that helps me in my relationship. So how, what would you say is the most, the thing that really helped you see? I mean, I know you mentioned Rohini's compassion for you, even when you were like very stirred up in your thinking, genuine compassion, not sort of condescending, there, there, darling, yeah, calm yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. Um, you talked about that, but what else, what would the, as something else that you really see helps you in those moments? Yeah, I think that uh, actually I was talking about this this morning. This came up for me is that I had this experience. and This is quite recent. I think, you know, what I love about this understanding is that it, it just seems to keep growing and growing. Yeah. You know, I have, you know, I'll have one insight and then I think, yeah, that's an insight. That's <laughs> extraordinary. That's amazing. My life is going to really shift now. Mm -hmm. And then it's just sort of going to a deep. I find myself going to deeper and deeper levels. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that there was a situation recently where um I had, you know, we, some, she'd done something that really pissed me off. <laughs> we were standing at the kitchen sink. I can't even remember what it was, but something, she'd done something or said something and I, I'd really taken it personally. And um, I think that, you know, I probably, I don't, I can't even recall if I had, had, I acted out or had said anything, you know, from that place, from that mindset. But I remember, well, I thought, well, this is a good time to go and walk the dog. <laughs> And then I was walking the dog and uh, we live uh, to nearby, you know, there's a trail that goes across a hill nearby. And I, I, I had, I recalled this experience that had happened last year where I had, you know, I used to really suffer big time from, from uh, for having a fear of heights. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways in which that could be put to the test uh, would be on a freeway and then not really know where the hell you are and then all of a sudden find yourself on this like giant bridge going across yeah. this huge gorge. And I'd be one of those drivers that would want to drive at 10 miles an hour on the hard <laughs> shoulder and just like... <laughs> let's Pretend you have a flat tire. I don't know what I... I just wanted like life to stop, st stand still all in, all in a second. And I think because you're on the freeway, it's not like you have the luxury to exactly. turn around. So, um, so I had this experience and I'm going across this like a uh, huge gorge or whatever it was and, and just all that, you know, those symptoms of physiology that usually mm -hmm. would come on board with that fear of heights. 
And it just suddenly occurred to me in that moment. I was like, well, you know, what? I don't need to get on board that train of thought. I mm. actually don't need to go there because I will settle if I'm really, I, if I really have a strong understanding about how the mind works. Then, then this is just all an illusion too. That I don't yeah. really need to feel those 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 feelings that come with that thinking. I actually don't need to get on board that train. And so. And then I didn't have any of the same symptoms that you yeah. would that I would normally have under those circumstances, and that was a real eye opener to me. That was an extraordinary moment. And then fast forward, you know, a year or so later, and I'm on this hill with the dog, and I'm like really mad at my wife, and I'm marinating in those in that low mood, thinking about her. And then it just suddenly, you know, I, I just suddenly remembered. Well, knowing what I know, I know that I will settle. But more importantly, actually. I know that I can actually ignore the thinking that comes with, you know, the thinking and the feelings that come along with that thinking. Yeah. And so that was a that's real, that's beautiful. it was a big moment for me. Yeah. And, so you um, didn't have to get on the train of, <laughs> I didn't get on the I train, but I wife. was very much on the train, you know, yeah. that old sort of narrative, those old yeah. neural pathways that are sure. so compelling and alluring yeah. that I could, jump headlong into and, and just, you know, have a field day about, you know, judgment and, yeah. and, and hating my wife maybe even to go that far. But I just realized that's just an old narrative. It's just something that I, I actually, knowing that I, you know, knowing that what I know, I will stabilize, I will come back to my equilibrium. But what is more is I just don't need, even need to listen or, yeah. or, or run with those thinking. Although just, that, that for me, I think has been huge. I love that analogy. I, I, I'm, what's flashing through my mind as I'm listening to you is, you know, I don't have to get on the victim train. Right. I mean, that one really yeah. can take you far. Yeah. And so, wow, that's, that's a really great No, visual. that's a beautiful way of putting it, the victim yeah. train, because I think that... Well, that's what we do when we get yeah. stirred up and pissed off with our with partners. You know, somehow they've done us wrong or, you know, yeah. how dare they or whatever. And someone who lived in London for years and actually relied on <laughs> southern region <laughs> rail service. I think, that, I know I'm imagining Euston Station, number oh, nine. Well, I, I remember, you know, you know, I would be late for the train. I'd have yeah. to run down the platform. And I was pretty young and reckless back then. And I'd open the door and jump in. Yeah. But um, I have that visual very much yeah. rooted in my mind. It's kind of like, yeah, I don't need to get on board that train leaving Platform <laughs> 5 well on its way to wreck and ruin. That I can leave so that well cool. alone and just yeah. stay on the platform and wait for, you know, wait yeah. for a, a nicer carriage to come my way. First class. First class, exactly. <laughs> that is so great. Oh, my God. This is, um, you know, I love this about this understanding. And I think you shared it too. I was reading something you'd written just the stories and the metaphors we get to use when we're working with our clients and and um, just how creative. I mean, it's just constantly when we're in that moment, these sort of like these bubble ups of wisdom that or insights we get. Um, yeah. Just truly amazing. So I want to talk about the vlogs you do with Rohini. Okay. They, how do you feel about those? I think in the <laughs> beginning you had a little resistance. I hated but, them to begin with. Oh, but they're so great. They're so brilliant because they really point to to just what I love about this understanding, which is the freedom that we get, the freedom to just laugh at ourselves and our humanity. It's not about becoming spiritual and therefore never, you know, having these moments. But um, I was just listening to the one with you doing the crossword <laughs> right. while your dog takes a poop. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just feels like there is nothing off limit that you guys won't talk about. Yeah, well, it's so interesting when you start to get a lens for this understanding yeah. and you see the world from through, through from that vantage point. That you know, there are all these little things that sort of seem commonplace that suddenly take on a whole new meaning. So, for argument's sake, with the crossword. I suddenly realized that, and, and this is something I've kind of always been aware of, but now that I have an understanding, more of an understanding of how the mind works, it mm -hmm. now makes perfect sense. But I remember I would do the crossword on the train and, and, um, and then they would always get to the point where there would be a bunch of clues that I just couldn't solve. And I really want to solve them. It's like, yeah, I'm five muscling. clues away from like having this cross, <laughs> crossword complete. So I would really try my damnedest to get that done, you know, on my commute home. And then uh, invariably what would happen is that like these clues would just seem impossible, just beyond my comprehension. Mm -hmm. And I would get really frustrated. But then I would like probably pick it up the following day in the morning or something because there's, there's still a part of me that wanted to complete it. But in a more settled state, I would always manage to be able to do yeah. that. And so I'd forgotten about that because I hadn't done a crossword for about <laughs> 20 years because we've lived in L.A. more, you know, for about 23, 24 mm -hmm. years now. 
So I don't have the luxury of the evening standard crossword, but I discovered you could do it online. And I'd forgotten there was this sort of facility that, you know, you could actually get most of it done, then have the, the several clues that you couldn't. And then, and then when I was, you know, I was walking the dog one day doing this crossword, had the same experience and then couldn't finish it off, got really kind of frustrated. And then the following morning I woke up and I said, wow, I'm actually feeling like I feel really settled this morning. Mm -hmm. I'm aware of how settled I am in my thinking. And then I thought, oh, I shall do the crossword that I couldn't do yesterday. Let's see if that will work. And it was extraordinary to me because it was just, it just literally within 10 seconds what I had spent 30 minutes I trying know. my damnedest to do mm -hmm. just was crystal clear to me. So yeah. it was just perfect example for me how a settled mind, you know, you have access yeah. it, to that it, wisdom. It's amazing. It's like, you know, often I, I get sort of because I panic and I'll forget people's names or I'll, I'll forget something. And I will just say, I, I never chase it anymore. I'm just simply like, don't even go there. It'll come. And then within a minute, it pops in the word I was looking for or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even I had that experience this morning with my th this ring. We were up in La Conna a few weeks ago and I just couldn't find my ring since I got back. And I'm thinking, oh, I must have left it in the Airbnb. <laughs> right. I'll call them this right. morning. Right. And I have literally searched up and down in my house everywhere I could possibly look. And I was just about to make the call. And... um. And just, I was in my bathroom and something just said, look behind that. And I'm, as I'm doing it, I'm thinking, not be behind that. And I moved this thing over and there it was. Isn't that amazing? It just, it blows me away. It happens yeah. all the yeah. time. Just that quiet, or that trusting, that quiet mind, that listening for that guidance that's yeah. always within us. Yeah. No, so I, something told you to yeah, become no, a coach. To totally. <laughs> I mean, I've had a bunch of those experiences. Actually, yeah. it reminds me lately what's coming up for me is, you know, the, the more, you know, the more, that I, more things like this that I do or, or trainings or workshops. One of my um, biggest fears with doing public speaking was just kind of have that moment where you forget what you're going to say next. <laughs> yes. Like you're trying to make a really valuable point and then all of a sudden it just sort of seems to disappear. But for me, I think that the disappearing factor is, the, is, is my thinking gets really revved up. It's like, yeah. oh, I'm really attached to this point I want to make next. And then there's some little sort of gremlin inside saying, I'm going to get you. <laughs> You're going to completely mess this up for you. And I have the same one. Oh, you do? <laughs> yes. And so and now I'm kind of noticing more where I will like have it will be my, my let's say for argument's sake, it's my opportunity to speak. I'm doing a webinar. And it's yeah. my opportunity to speak next. And I've got this amazing point that I'm going to make. And that little gremlin comes in. In the past, I would have just like freaked out and probably really had to <laughs> stop and listen to the gremlin. And now I'm just kind of like, you know what, you can have your say, but I'm just going to wait because I know yeah. it'll come to me. Yeah. And in my mind, it used to think, I used to think of, this takes a long time to settle. But now I find that the, t the, the, the time frame in which I'm coming back to my equilibrium is mm -hmm. almost instantan instantaneous. Yeah. And that's been really cool is to sort of watch me settle in real time yeah. and trust yeah. that I'll know what to say, that I'll come up with something. Oh. And usually I get back <laughs> on track and find the point that I want to make. I was just about to say, I, can, I cannot ima imagine that you, Angus, would ever <laughs> not have something really entertaining to <laughs> oh, say. Well, thank you. <laughs> so um, talk a bit. So, so you coach now and I know you do um, consulting with businesses and one on ones. And you also do the um, relationship workshops with, with your wife, Nagini. Yes. So how, um, they're a four-day intensive, is that right? Yes. And you each take on one of the couples or do you – Yeah. How does that work? So how it works is the couple come in and usually come in at each other's throats. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and have a laundry – a long laundry list of woes. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just really, you know, knowing what we know, that's kind of, you know, defeats the whole logic to this understanding. We don't want our, you know, our couples to remain in a revved up, yeah. distraught state. So the first thing that we have to do is separate them because otherwise mm -hmm. they're just going to continue getting yeah. themselves into the weeds. And then we work with them individually and, you know, that's, that's, that's the target is to, is to facilitate in any way that we can them having an insight mm -hmm. um, and they get to see something. And then, you know, hopefully at the end of the day, we'll bring them back together and they're all sweetness and light with yeah. each other because they've, they've seen something that was fresh and new. Yeah. And it has nothing to do with the other person. It's, it's their own insight to how this system works. It's their and own insight. Yeah. yeah. And so it's through that lens that the relationship improves, not because you've worked on yeah. bad behavior. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's so interesting. And I think that for me, and this is fresh and new, and I think from the, the, the recent training that, that uh, we both attended up in, the, mm -hmm. uh, in Lacona, 
that um, George talking about the vertical and horizontal line and the horizontal line being about how we stick to like trying to look for an opening to share the understanding and then the sorry it's the vertical line <laughs> yes. it's the vertical line consciousness line and the horizontal line is is how our clients get yeah. into the weeds so That's for the me the dirty laundry the line the dirty laundry <laughs> line exactly I love that I'm gonna steal that so it's so fascinating now to see how that dirty laundry line is so compelling to the client yeah. and that's all they want to talk about yeah. and they're really much in the mindset that yeah it's all their fault and if only they take their dirty washing <laughs> down i'd be like so much happier yeah and you just have to stick to the task at hand which is sharing the understanding and you know it, it feels like now i feel like i'm kind of like a scratched record i'm mm -hmm. constantly sharing the understanding hopefully i'm looking for more and more creative ways to do that yeah. but it's so amazing just to see you know the shift take place that suddenly something it somehow penetrates sorry yeah. somehow penetrates that veneer that they put up to yeah. like not want to take on board that information that i have my my dirty washing line yeah. which i'm very attached to but as well, all of a sudden that just falls away i think there's just so much fear though i think fear keeps that in place and i think when when we understand when we get this understanding we understand that we're just all human we're all the same we all do the same stuff there's nothing to be ashamed of nothing to hide nothing to defend i think that when they get that it's just amazing and you're just so present with the other person and so accepting and so Given, you know, what you and Rohini have, have been through in your own relationship, I'm sure that, you know, what you teach your clients is just incredible. Yeah, no, it's, it's super fun. I really, yeah. I really am enjoying it. You know, I've got a lot of juice for, for doing the couple's work at yeah. the moment. It's, well, it's, it's been great. That's really great. So we are up on our time. Oh, my goodness. Kind of, I know it goes by so yeah, fast. I think I'm going to have by. to turn it to an hour. I could sit here all day talking about this. But thank you so much for joining me today. And um, I'm so excited you can... Go on your website, um, Angus Ross Consulting. Yeah, angusrossconsulting.com. Right? Consulting yeah. And find out more. And Rohini Ross, because that's where all the couples workshops yes. and things is. is. And we're, we're in the process of amalgamating the two Both. at some point. Okay. Yeah. Fabulous. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, it's been such a pleasure. Thank you so much. And I will see you soon. And mine too. What a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Too.